are people in Silicon Valley troubled by this, troubled by the same dark visions that she just outlined, thinking, you know, I'm, I may be on the wrong side of history here. Mm -hmm. If democracy goes bad, if our kids don't read anymore, shit, man, I don't really want to be on that side of the book that gets written. Are you asking me? I'm asking you. Well, I'll tell you, one of the things that really changed, aside from um, the whole politics of the world going bad at once, uh, and, you know, <laughs> another thing that happened is a lot of folks at Google and Facebook got old enough to have their own kids. Yeah. And so I have a <laughs> Silicon Valley kid, and her friends uh, are often uh, the children of parents who work at Google or Facebook. And if you want to see some kids who are absolutely forbidden from using technology, see a kid, you know, go to a kid whose parent works at Google or Facebook. Um, so there's definitely an awareness that something's gone terribly wrong. Uh, I do want to point out that this gets into slightly wonky business stuff, but just really, there's only two big tech companies that rely on the manipulation business model, and that's Google and Facebook. The other giants, you might criticize them for many good reasons, uh, Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, uh, they do it because everybody does it, but they don't rely on it. And one of the really interesting things, which I, I've been saying over and over, and I really noticed in the Wall Street community starting to get, I actually got a bunch of analysts to applaud this line a while ago, Google and Facebook are just as addicted to their own model as they get us addicted to it. They cannot diversify their profit centers. Google can spin off an endless number of weird alphabet companies to solve death or send the internet around with balloons or whatever it is. <laughs> but they are still stuck on this one profit center. Facebook can spend billions of dollars on a VR company and they're still stuck on the one profit center. And the thing is, <laughs> the other companies are not. They have diversified their profit center. So the thing is, it's not good for business in the long term. So I think rather than leaving money on the table, they serve their shareholders. And then you look at, like, poor Twitter. It's ruining the world and it's not even making money, right? <laughs> and it's, it's like, this is actually... <laughs> Um, like, I don't think I'm saying something that's anti-business. I don't think I'm telling investors that they have to take this giant hit. I actually think there's a remarkable degree of coherence between being decent and, and doing good business in this particular case. There's no guarantee that that should ever be true, and it'll never be perfectly true. But in this particular case, I think you can be a really... Um, you can be a ferocious Silicon Valley business person and still feel that this current business model is completely messed up and has, not serving your interests. Has that been your experience, Nick? Oh, I think that the biggest change in Silicon Valley over the last year and a half has been questioning what have we wrought with these creations. I think, I mean, if you think about, like Mark Zuckerberg, for his flaws, created Facebook to make the world more open and connected. Like, that is genuinely what he believed, and he genuinely believed that having more people using Facebook you know, creates a common humanity and it's the new universal language and it brings people together. Like, he liked making money, but that was, it was partly about that. And then to see the tool elect Donald Trump, who, <coughs> regardless of your politics, is deeply tribalistic. It's the opposite of making the world more open and connected. That was a profoundly hard moment for him, for Facebook, for a lot of Silicon Valley to say, wait a second, we built these tools to do this thing and it led to this guy. Like, and they've been deeply questioning it, right? But it, it's hard, you know, it's hard to fundamentally change your product when you make billions of dollars and you have, you know, tens of thousands of employees who, you know, you employ and feel responsible for and want to be able to pay their salaries and their bonuses. And you have seen Facebook, I mean, the most interesting question to me is can Facebook solve its problem? And they keep rolling out solutions that are in the right direction. They just rolled yes out yesterday all kinds of algorithmic changes to stop, you know, toxic content, which is, the most important thing, I wish they had rolled all those changes out five years ago, but they are rolling them out. There's, so there's profound awareness at all of these companies about the issues that we are talking about today. The question is just how do you solve them?